So, welcome and welcome back to Point Stinkering Garage and today we're gonna open a new journey on the channel because today we're gonna start a brand new series or actually it's a mega series whose title is Anatomical Approach to Human Body Topology So, it's a, it's, it's a work in progress and it's something that I've been doing for the last few months and and yeah I, and I guess it's gonna be the second big series on the channel the first being uh, a tailless approach to cloth sewing and this is being the second so the goal of this series is actually to use anatomically conscious topology to create a proper 3d human model so this is the example of what we're gonna do on this series right here and, and yeah so the reason why it's a mega series is because uh, it's gonna be huge and long so I'm gonna segment this mega series into smaller series so that it's more manageable for me to record and for you to watch so uh, I mentioned earlier about anatomically conscious, right? Because I think it's a good way to think of it, right? So anatomy is not the main goal. It's not even a goal. It's, it's just a guide for us to create a 3D human model, which is the goal, which in turn is gonna be used to create an artwork which is the main goal of everything that we do in Blender. So, so yeah, it's, it seems like a hierarchy, so to speak. The anatomy supports the creation of a 3D human model, which then supports the creation of the artwork. So, so yeah, the ana anatomy is not everything right it doesn't stand on its own so you shouldn't lose your head about it as well so so yeah the the, the hierarchy is actually looking a lot like a production pipeline right so it starts with the 3d model then it gets rigged and then it gets posed and animated however the thing about production pipeline is that it's not as good as you would expect it to be because you would expect that it's already been standardized but the fact is it's not I've worked with several clients each having their own 3d human models to be either rigged or posed or animated but when I saw the 3d models at first, I would think that anyone who created them, the 3D models, has no idea what they're doing. But after later reflections, the problem, I, I would say that the problem is not actually on the 3D modelers themselves, but rather on the nature of the pipeline itself. Be the problem is that it's segregated. The people who make the 3D models are different than people who rig and animate it. Or in other words, people who actually use it, you see? A and then uh, what, what makes everything worse is that they don't talk with each other. So, so yeah, if, if you notice that all 3D human models are going to be made in this resting uh, pose, so to speak, either an A or T pose, right? So this one has an A rest pose. So as far as the 3D modeler is concerned, they just have to make something that look good in this resting pose, right? And that's it. Meanwhile, when it's finished, the 3D model will be given off to other people to rig or animate, which happens to be one of my jobs. So yeah, in the end, we have to kind of clean, clean up the mess 
of poorly made 3D human models. Well, uh, luckily for me that I can do all three of them. I can, I can do the modeling, I can do the rigging, and I can do the posing and animating. So in this case, uh, I have a fuller sense of how to make a 3D human model so that it's functionally ready to be rigged and posed or animated. So, so yeah, r remember about the goal, you know, it's to create, is to use anatomically conscious topology to create a proper 3D human model. The, the word proper in a sense, I think is better than something like, you know, production ready, you know, like it's, it's like a phrase people throw a lot very lightly these days because it's proper because this, the model will serve us very well when it comes for us to actually use the 3D human model. It will deform well, it will behave predictably, and it will bear a clean workflow. In any case, you will need this properness because uh, whether you're using the 3 human models for production or simply just for fun. Of course, done on, done, if done on, on your own, you will need some sort of foresight to see whether this or that 3D human model is, you know, will be proper or not. But I've done the trials and errors and I can say that the 3D human models, the 3D human model that we're going to create here will serve you well in achieving the main goal of everything that we do in Blender and that is making an artwork. So, so yeah, well, well, when I come to think of it, even if it's not for yourself, you will help others to have an easier life uh, by making a proper 3D human model in the first place. So, so yeah, that's, that's it for the opening part of the introduction. Uh, on the next part, uh, we're going to talk about the background of the series and the problems I've encountered doing and learning about human body topology with resources currently available out there. So yeah, that's what we're going to talk about next. So that's it for now. So see you later.